And welcome to the Midday Show. I'm Jeff Everett. He is Mark Messina. Um, today, we're going to do a little bit of reflection. And uh, we're going to talk about where we were two years ago in April of 2022. I'm sure it won't be that exciting. Um, but we're going to reflect because they're saying we are now in the endemic, uh, which I think is, personally, I think is great news. Um, but we're going to talk about what it means to be in an endemic, just kind of reflect on the past two years and just kind of wrap it all up into a nice little bow tie. Um, we're also going to talk about one of the fallouts of the last two years. They're saying that it's going to be the unlimited choices era for groceries is done. That whole aspect is over. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, but we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we have some weekend trends, some stuff going on. I'm sure you want to hear about Tiger again. Um, so we're going to Why? What did he do? Stuff. I just he I heard he was okay yesterday. He was he was he putted like a champ. There you go. So we'll bring that up to in weekend trends. Um, before we get to the endemic, let's talk about you, Mark. How are you feeling today? Well, you know, as much as yesterday was opening day, today's kind of a lot of for, for people that matter. Um, the Yankees, Red Sox play today because they got rained out yesterday. The Phillies play today. So um, I know the Mets lost yesterday. The Pirates lost yesterday. Oh, no, the Mets won. Um, but to a lot of, of our region, um, I would say in a way that I don't know where Boston ranks, but the two most popular teams in our region are the Yankees and the Phillies, and they go today. So um, so as the world kicked off baseball yesterday, uh, our region kind of kicks it off today. So it is a – and it's nice out today, actually. It's The sun shines. and um, I was thinking this on my drive-in, and not, not to go off on a tangent. I wonder what – it is so the, – the sun is such a rare occurrence – in north central pennsylvania in the first quarter of the year yeah. that when people talk about you know seasonal depression and and some of these things that are real things um i wonder how much that affects it because it, you just can't help but feel better when the sun is shining and when you walk outside and you're like wow the sun is actually out just exemplifies how long it's been since the sun's been out. And just because it's cold in, in January, when it's 22 degrees, the sun can still be shining. It doesn't have to be overcast every day, but it seems like around here it is overcast every day. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I, but here's the part you and I've talked about this. There's a lot of days where I don't mind it. There's a lot of days where I actually tend to prefer it. The overcast. Yeah, it just gives you like listen, I burn easily. It gives you an excuse to kind okay. of bunker down. So I don't I don't know. I mean, I have a very weird relationship with the sun. It <laughs> is not I am so pale and I am so and, and this is your part. And you've you've referred to me as lazy. I like to say that I like to be comfortable. And so the sun and I at times, like it's just not always a good vibe for the two of us. There there are a lot of days where him and I are kind of having it out with one another. You know, it's funny because when we used to talk about it, the thing I hate most about basketball is because it's indoors, the climate is the same every day. And when you're as, as a football player, baseball player, soccer player, track, the sometimes the elements suck. Sometimes the elements just cancel you. And um, sometimes they're great. But after when you have a great day, you appreciate it more because you just had a lousy day and you had to bundle up and it was windy and cold and all that stuff. And, um, and I talked that that's one of the things I loved about the outdoor sports. There was always that unknown and you were always either enjoying the weather or struggling against the weather. And, and you talked about how you would hate that, that you love basketball because you show up and everything's fine every day. Yeah. I mean, that's my favorite part about basketball. Is that like, you don't have to, should I wear a long sleeve under? Should I not? Should I like, do I need long pants? Like, do I need to like, you just, it's not even, we're showing up and we're playing like that. Is see, that's part of the part challenge of, of the outdoor sports. Like, what do you wear? That's, oh yeah, yeah. I love it. But anyway. No, I, I get that. There is an elemental side that basketball might miss, but see, I think some of that's worked into the gyms, right? Bigger gyms, further space between the backboard. Like there are some like elements, but it's just not weather related. No, no, the weather really makes it. No, I, I agree with you. Um, so this is something that I sent to you this morning. We are heading towards, and some of us already believe that we are in the in, the endemic. 
Um, by the way, most people think that that's a play on words, like the END, meaning like it's the end of the pandemic. But oh, an endemic, it, the endemic is actually a word. It's a it's a real term that is used. Um, and I want to make sure that I get it right here. An endemic just means that that it is we are learning to live with after the pandemic or we're learning to live with the disease that occurred during the pandemic. So that is an endemic. So well, you go but they made the word like selfie is a real word, but once upon a time, somebody kind of coined it. So, no, I get it, though. That is uh, I did not know that was. Oh, no, no, no. This is a real word. Are you like I'm, I still think we're missing the point? No, Endemic. I OK, it's a, it's a Webster word, but somebody they had they had these pandemics and then they're like, oh, this is the end of it. So it's the endemic. Um, yeah, you might be right. Maybe I'm wrong. That's fair. Um, so we are heading towards the endemic. There was a piece put out um, for months now. Many American European leaders and scientists have foretold that the coronavirus pandemic would soon become an endemic. Uh, COVID-19 would resolve into a disease that we would learn to live with. Um, here, the craziest part, I because I'm thinking about this like home ownership. I'm busy. I got a lot of stuff on my plate. Even walking around today and even um, just doing some of the things I've done recently I kind of just forgot where I was two years ago. I mean, two years ago, I was locked up in a house, afraid to go like out. I don't want to say I was afraid, but like I played by the rules. Like I tried to play my part and I tried to do, you know, what the government was asking of me to do and kind of hauled up inside. Does it feel like the first thing that went through my head was that feels like a decade ago. It does not feel like an April or two ago. It does feel like a long time ago. And I remember like, this is probably the wrong way to look about it, but um, like COVID has been around for a long time. It's just been different strains of the flu as, as people talked about, you know, when it came out on the back of like Lysol cans, it said we'll kill certain COVID. COVID-19 was incredibly deadly um, to, especially to people who were afflicted because it attacked the lungs and because it caused so many respiratory issues. So like when I look at, was COVID around this winter? Well, Sure, but it was just this winter was just a flu winter for the most part. And there was the this variant and that variant and the Omicron, whatever. And then they're like, oh, this variant is much um, more tolerable. Well, the flu is stronger and less stronger. So I get the severity of what of what happened with uh, COVID-19. But uh, like, I don't want to say I, I think it's been over for a long time now. Maybe I'm being naive because I'm you know, kind of younger and healthier. And maybe it is, it, it is um, still dangerous, but you know, I don't know, like we go through, I, and I, I still see people that wear masks all the time. I haven't worn mask in ages. Um, we go to sporting events and we go to concert and like, I haven't been to a rock concert, but I've been to choral concerts. I've been to multiple of them. I've been to a school art show. We just kind of go everywhere now. And yeah, I mean, some people got sick this winter, but people get sick every winter. So I don't I don't know. I, I think the pandemic kind of lasted one year. And but that's just me. And then I think it was just the flu again. And moved into it. Um, did you see the crowds for the final four? It was I mean, that place was packed at New Orleans. And I just it was I did have a moment of reflection and thinking like, oh, we didn't do this a year or two ago. Like this was not like I almost have to remind myself now that there was this gap of time that we just didn't do these things. It's amazing how quickly maybe I'm naive, maybe I, it's I'm too young, but like it is amazing to me how quickly I have moved on from a year ago. Well, I, I saw I was watching a bad movie one time, and but there was a line that I'll never forget, and it is it's amazing how quickly we do move on. And what the guy said was. And, and it's funny because I just mentioned the flu. He's like, it's when you have the flu and you feel awful. And there are those moments where you're like, you, you wonder if you're ever going to be healthy again. And then you get over the flu. And then it's like those first days, whether it's a stomach bug or whether it's just achy. Like when you have a stomach bug, and you can't keep anything down. And then like that first piece of toast that you eat it and it stays down or you have a cracker. And then like, Two days later, you're ordering Big Macs again through the drive-thru. And you you can almost hardly even remember that it's like, because once everything goes back to normal, 
then everything was over. You know, oh my God, yeah, I remember when I was sick, but now I'm fine. So let's just shovel food down our throat again. And um, it is incredible how quickly we bounce back and how quickly we forget. And um, in, really in so many aspects of life, other than just health. And uh, I think that's why people break up and get back together and break up and get back together because they forgot why they broke up the first time. <laughs> so well, anyway, be that as it may. True. Um, so just a couple of little tidbits about this. Um, is some of the stuff doing with the endemic. So some of the comparisons that you're using is measles, influenza, malaria, um, different strains of the flu. And what they're doing is they're looking at peaks of that during different times. So one of them that they use, most people know about 1918, um, the flu during that time. So they're looking at the cases during that time and what it looks like. And essentially what they're saying is COVID-19 is very relevant to that. Um, it's very comparable. And so they believe that we are kind of in an endemic, meaning it's not going away, but we are certainly learning how to live with it. Um, and it is becoming just like any other strain that we may deal with. Some are worse than others. Um, now, here's this is the crazy part. And I'm not trying to play like I, I'm not trying to be what's what I'm looking for, like doom and gloom. I'm not trying to act as if it's not over. In most cases, year three actually saw a spike which is the opposite for us right now. Um, there was a bizarre spike in year two of COVID-19 cases, not deaths, but cases. Do you remember that kind of almost, it would have been like near the end of last summer going into the fall. We had that like really severe spike going into this past winter. Yeah, but I, so I think the that was part, seasonal and I think there's yeah, a lot of reasons for that. Absolutely. Um, so what they're saying is that that's the biggest difference they're seeing between this endemic and past endemics or past times where we've tried to leave um, severe sickness or a pandemic. Usually in year three, there's like this bizarre spike between the severity of the actual illness itself and the cases that are attracted, like how many people actually get it. Um, and they're saying that that is the only piece of this that they can't really that doesn't align with every other chart. And they're trying to figure out what that means if COVID-19 was more severe, so it happened sooner, or are we misreading the numbers because it was a global pandemic? Are there still areas in the world that have not yet reached their peak, that have not yet seen the worst is yet to come? And that's what they're trying to divvy up right now and decide. Well, I think too, it's not like everyone was tested. So, Correct. Um, you know, there are people who through the first time, through the second time, like this winter, you know, I had sniffles a little bit and I had like I never got sick. But there were times that so maybe I had a mild, mild strand when, you know, for a couple of days I was congested, but I didn't yeah. feel sick. I didn't miss any work. I didn't miss any basketball. So I just kind of kept going. But, you know, so. You know, how many who knows how many people actually had it and we'll never know because they never got tested. Um, even people who were either asymptomatic or people who were really sick. So who knows? Who knows? What, um, what this is something that's been on my mind a lot, too, because I don't know if you've noticed or not. People are literally trying to give um, hand sanitizer away. Yes. Like they can't get rid of this stuff right now. Um, I've seen masks on sale, like the actual like cloth masks and different things. Um, at different clothing retails. I, I do wonder like how much product retail, all these things that were aimed at the pandemic, what comes of it, what's going to happen to it. Um, and just kind of it, some of this stuff I felt like by the time we caught up, it was over. Like it was kind of, by the time we had enough hand sanitizer, by the time we had enough masks, by the time we got all this stuff, it was kind of already like the ball was rolling down the other side of the hill. So I do, that side of it fascinates me as well too. Like what comes of that and what do some of these companies pivot? How do they find a way to get out of some of this overhaul? Well, I think what's going to happen too, I think we've learned a lot and just some common sense things that once they have installed all these plexiglass things like at, at grocery stores and anywhere there's a checkout counter. Are um, you, real quick, are you those surprised? Will stay forever. Are, you, are you, you think they're going to stay forever? That's what I was right. going to ask you. There's no I reason not to. Every time I see one, I'm still like, I'm not like bothered by it, but I do have this moment of like, I still think it's weird. I have not adjusted to that yet. Um, see, I, yeah, I kind of see it as the norm, but in, if I was a clerk uh, in the winter, I, would, I would demand it. 
Like, why would you take it down? And uh, I understand the installation from the get-go was a pain in the ass. But now that they're installed, I think they'll stay forever. And I think because uh, masks have been commonplace, you will see people in the winter during the cold and flu season, which comes every year, whether it's COVID or not, you will see there's a percentage of people that will wear masks because even if they don't, I mean, whether it makes them healthy or not, it, it common sense would think it would. And psychosomatically, it's going to make them feel like they have a better chance of surviving the winter without getting it. So um, I think those are the two things. Now, in our society, it's going to be less than 10%. But up until this, nobody wore masks out in public. And now I think there will always be mask wearers during um, the cold and flu season. So here, here's some basic questions for you. And some I was surprised by my answers to these. I found these online. Um, do you still have your masks? Um, well, I have, uh, I have a box of them that I bought for basketball season that I okay. put in like the travel bag of basketball stuff for every game in case we ever showed up at a gym where they demanded them. So I okay. bought a box of 25 and okay. there are 25 still in the box. So, okay. yeah, I, so I have a whole box of them. Um, okay. So yeah, but I, like the cloth I ones, have... I don't, I don't know where the cloth ones are anymore. Yeah. I do not have my cloth. I honestly, I don't even know what I did with them. Um, your vaccination card. Do you still keep it with you? You know, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that. Um, my daughter, my, uh, who's a senior right now, got accepted to Vassar. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is, and this is the crazy world that we live in. So she is accepted uh, and she is committed to go to a school that she's never been to because uh -huh. we couldn't. Visiting was limited. And then okay. the acceptance rate was tough. So she's like, well, I don't want to make the drive all the way there and all the way back until I unless I know I got in. And then once she got in, it was the middle of winter and it was during basketball season. She's like, well, we can just, there's like accepted students day in April. So we're going in next week, next week. Yeah, I think next week. And okay. um, she just told me you need to take your vaccination card. Okay. So fortunately, I know where it is. Um, so you do have it. I, I do have it and I need it. So, okay. yes, that would that's sense. our world. Vassar is New York City, correct? No, it's it's upstate. It's in Poughkeepsie, but it's like an hour from New York City. Okay, but it's New York State then. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, some other ones. Do you still do you do you still know what yes. day? You got, do you still know what day you got your shot? No. Okay. I only got. See, I can't tell you. I cannot tell you when I got my shot. I, like I, I honestly do not remember when I got my shot. Well, and this is what's funny. I got my shot in May, um, okay. because I think there was a debate. But because I tested positive on Valentine's Day of twenty twenty one, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty twenty one Valentine's Day. I tested positive. And at the time, there was a debate like you should wait 30 days or 90 days. So I waited 90 days. So it was May something. Okay. And then I got my booster shot. I want to say, I don't remember the exact date, but okay. it was it was the day. <laughs> there was a big, I think it was the SEC championship game. Because okay. I wanted, there was a game I wanted to watch first. And then I wanted to watch that one. And I had a window. And I ran down to Sam's Club, and I got it, and I almost made it. I was like five minutes late for the game. All right. So that was the yeah. longest. No, that was the longest. No, I would argue you don't remember. Like you had to go through all that to try to remember. I would bet if I pulled up a football, I think it was the SEC championship. Okay. No, that That's makes right. sense. Um, here's: Are you still using toilet paper from the pandemic? Do you mean recycling it? No. No, no, no. It. like you know, like people bought all this toilet paper. No, I know. And they just, and they just put it question. in the storage. Um, have you bought toilet paper since the pandemic? It's been a while. We, that's that's fair. So you're yeah. probably still using probably. pandemic toilet paper. Probably. That is fantastic. So April of 2022, you're still using pandemic toilet paper. Probably. Maybe I bought I bought toilet paper for now. My situation's a little different. 
but I just bought toilet paper for the first time since the pandemic started. It's because you didn't own a toilet. Um, yeah, but for 16, 18 months of it, I did. And we had when, enough toilet paper to get us through. When you're, when you're couch surfing, <laughs> one of the responsibilities of taking in these, you know, these strays like you are, you have to provide them with toilet paper. That's, that is true. Um, the last thing that I wanted to say about this, I didn't know if you had any other thoughts about just like the endemic or the last two years. Um, I can't stress, and again, this is me just being like holier than thou, and, and I apologize. I can't express how important it is that we move forward. Have you seen some of the stuff in other countries? Like, have you still, I know the one day we talked about what was going on in Australia and we were talking about what was going on in different parts of Asia. Um, but if you've looked around, there is crazy footage in China of people on their balconies, um, basically like saying that they're, they're basically trying to get supplies. Like they, they're not allowed out. They need supplies. Um, and there is footage of a drone coming over and in Chinese telling them, go back into your house. Um, something it had something to do with keeping the faith. Don't give up hope. And like asking them to go back into their apartment. And it is like the most, dystopian video I have ever seen. So the Chinese government is using actual drones that are coming up to people's apartment balconies and asking them to go back inside. It is April of 2022. And that is actually happening in other countries. So I just, I can't express enough how important it is that we just move forward because if you don't fight for that normalcy again, it might never come. Australia is still fighting to try to get back. Like citizens in Australia are still like having, getting called up, being checked on daily to see if they're at their house or not. It's some real like dystopian things still going on. And we're like two years into this really bizarre stuff. That is bizarre. I didn't know any of that. I think one of the things I think people have, um, there's so much that we always feel like we can do and it's always the option. So we don't really feel the urgency to do it. Um, we have just, there was a, I was on the phone last night with two of my college buddies and texts have gone around this morning and there were eight of us that lived in a house together. And we've just kind of finalized now that seven of us are getting together. And we think we're not positive. We think it's the first time that we've all been together since um, the one guy, the last wedding of the bunch. So, which, and he's been married now 15 something years. Um, now, uh, there have been times that most of us have got together. Maybe it was all, we can't remember. But, mm -hmm. um, but that was even 12 years ago. Uh, so I think one of these things is th that has come from it is... Um, you know, like you, you just got to get out and do these things, these things that you want to do, you just got to get out and do them. So, um, I think the world will change. And we've talked about the great resignation and people changing jobs and people adjusting. And, um, I think there are lots of ways socially as well that, uh, people, and I, I think one of the other aspects too, is, um, I think people have, there's a level of coming to appreciate being at home. And this is the first year I've never, I did not go out one time to watch March Madness. Um, mm -hmm. I sat home in the comfort of my home because I've kind of realized that sitting at home can be very comfortable. So, um, you know, now we got fight night this Saturday, so I'll be attending that. But it, it certainly people's habits have changed because of the pandemic uh, on a yeah. social level as well. well. Let's talk about that, too, because I think habits might be changing even more so. Um, the grocery shop drop, essentially the, the simplest way to put this, most grocery stores are now dropping brands. Um, I don't want to say at an alarming rate, but this is not a case of going to the store and not being able to find what you need. Like some of the times during the pandemic, this is a case of going to the store and there may not be the brand you're looking for. There may not be the flavor you're looking for. There, you know, the type of cereal, um, instead of there being eight choices of milk, there might be three. Um, there is a huge drop off in what grocery stores are keeping on their shelves versus the selection that they used to have available. I wonder why you're saying that as my mind went to. So places like... Um, that have their own brand, whether it be 
wise or whether it be Walmart or, you know, whatever, do they start because they know they can control their own inventory and their own logistics. So they, because yeah, because shipping has become so hit or miss. Sure. That do they just start stocking a lot more of their own? And nowadays have people got to the point where we don't, we're not as brand specific anymore. We just want toilet paper. So, so, so what you're hinting at is, is really like the deeper part of this story. Cause of course there's the, there's the running into somebody conversation where like, boy, I couldn't find such and such, or they didn't have my brand. And that's like the, the base conversation. The deeper conversation is we've always gone to the store and you've kind of decided there was a competition and you got to decide which brand won out, right? So if you felt like one brand wasn't as good or they were cheating you by not putting as much in the box or whatever, whatever reason, whatever your stand was against that company, you could vote on that by what you decided to take up to the register. And to your point, whether it's a Weiss or a Sam's Club has the members mark stuff. I know Tractor Supply has a lot of different things that are like very brand specific. You can only get them at Tractor Supply. Um, if these companies start kind of removing these competitive brands and they're only putting on the shelf like their brand, what does that mean? Is that a good or a negative thing? My initial gut is I don't think it's awful, but it's certainly not positive. Well, and it everything is cyclical. So if you take, you know, a grocery short store chain and they only they start stocking way more of their own stuff than other things, then people go to the other grocery store. And people who really need my one kid only eats this brand and my other kid only eats this brand. And you know, the shopping habits will dictate it. Um but yeah, some I, I mean I think we realize that it's it's like do you go to you go to restaurants with people and it takes them 10 minutes to order and you're like listen if you get that you're gonna like it if you get that you're gonna like it if you're gonna get that you're gonna like it like yeah. it's not really there's not one right answer here there's about a dozen right answers and yeah. it still takes them 10 minutes to decide so maybe we've helped society a little bit because of you know sometimes too many choices causes us problems It'll be quicker. Here was the best way that I found it put. This was from an article at Business Insider. Um, the pandemic made it so it's more expensive to produce the same amount of goods. Adding more variations of products makes it even more expensive. So a key manufacturing strategy has been to reduce product variety. This phenomenon has been called skew rationalization. So the SKU bars that you always see, the numbers. So this rationalization, so what comes is companies are trying to find this balancing zone, this Goldilocks zone of products that will make the most customers happy, but drive the most sales while minimizing operating costs and supply chain challenges. So if there's, you know, if you can pick 20 cereals, what is the number of cereals before I finally go? Well, this is, this is bull crap. Like I, I can't find the cereal I want. And so that is what a lot of these stores are trying to figure out right now is what is the number 16? Is it 12? Is it eight? What is that zone where I can keep you happy, but I can minimize all of my costs on the back end? I would say it's impossible to keep you happy. That would you be my so? First of all, did you just support Business Insider? Is that who you quoted? I don't know if I supported them. Did I use the quote from the supply chain specialist they interviewed? Yes, I did. That aren't isn't Business Insider like like the dirty I despise, dog? Like I despise Business Insider, but here's this is why I consider myself a decent citizen because just because I despise Business Insider doesn't mean that I a still don't read it and that b if they do have something worthwhile I don't appreciate it. No, I get it. That's fair. It's very yeah. thank you. Very big of me is what you meant to say. Well, I was going to say, it seems like you're supporting something you despise, which kind of goes against everything. But, but you know, whatever. I, I get it. I get it. But no, you're saying just because you don't like to do the information is still good. And I'm yeah, sure not everything. I'm sure there's good writers for Business Insider. You just hate the one guy. I'm sure they still have good. Inter like if they interview the right person, I'm still curious what that person says. No, I don't necessarily always. I don't agree with the take or the spin or how they might release it. But, you know, like if it's a good interview, I'll take the quotes from it for sure. Okay. That's good. Absolutely.
Um, weekend trends. Let's uh, anything outside of Tiger Woods. Why? Why? Why did you take that away from me? That's why I wore my red. Did I tell you? Did I mention that already? You mentioned that because to me. we're not going to be here on Sunday. Hopefully, Tiger's here on Sunday. Um, okay. His his one under par yesterday is one of the greatest sporting of feats you'll ever see. That's all. I just leave it at that. Okay, the we'll leave it at that. Here's here's um, some questions for you. Ready? Why won't God. the Yankees? Why won't the Yankees pay Aaron Judge? They will. You think they will eventually? Who said they won't? That right now they can't come on an agreement. The deadline. Wow. The deadline's about to pass. What deadline? There's a deadline for his renewal, like for his extension or whatever. Well, wow, whatever. Nope. You didn't. Did I just break news to you? I think I might have just broke news to you. They'll 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 pay him. It's fine. But it's he's. I don't know. I, I you you can only pay so many people a bajillion dollars, and you know even the Yankees have a have it's a limit. Lose. At you can you can only pay so many people a bajillion dollars and still lose. Um, Peter Thiel, do you know Peter? Thiel? Hey, by the way, how'd the Braves do yesterday? Exactly, uh, whatever. We're still listen. We haven't recovered yet from all the partying we just did throughout the throughout the colder months. Um, Peter Thiel, do you know Peter? Me, Peter Thiel. Nope. He was the PayPal co-founder. Um, he's you know one of the biggest hedge fund people in the in the country. Um, okay. He says that Bitcoin will never be controlled by the government. Um, and essentially went on to say that Bitcoin is the future, um, whether you want it to be or not. He blamed three people in the country for stopping Bitcoin from essentially being the number one currency in the world. Um, those people included Warren Buffett, Jamie Demon. Is it Demon or Diamond? Do you know who I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. um, and Larry Fink. I know you've heard of Warren Buffett, and I'm sure you've probably heard of Larry Fink, too, as well. Um so yeah, so Peter Thiel yeah, coming out. He was the guy that got assassinated. He's the publisher of Hustler, isn't he? The People versus Larry Fink. Yes. Yep. No, that's not him. It's Larry Flynn. It is Larry Flynn. Um, have you seen Have you seen that movie? By the way. Mm -hmm. With one. Woody Harrelson, is Larry Flynn? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, I'm trying to see what else here we have trending. Uh, I thought you would like that. So the Academy Board moved up their discussion on Will Smith's sanctions. At this, this is the funny part, dude. All of none of this really matters to me. What? What? How do they say? First of all, they can't take his award away. If they take his award away, it's a joke. Second of all, what are they going to do? Tell him you can't come next year. You may not be nominated next year anyway. Like, there is an aspect. Well, the funny part to me is they didn't they they didn't feel powerful enough to do anything in the moment, but now they feel like they're going to be powerful enough to do something a week later. Like I don't I don't understand it. Yeah, it it's sense. like I mean I don't think anyone when you look at the whole thing now that we stepped away, no one says that Chris Rock's joke was in good taste. Um, what he knew about um, um, Jada's condition or not, whatever. But nobody's arguing that. Um, Essentially, now all the intelligent people are saying Will Smith was out of line and handled it incredibly poorly, mm -hmm. um, and like no one is is applauding the Academy Awards for saying they let him stay. They say, well, we ask him to leave. Now there's there there's still talk about the LAPD may still arrest him, even though it's just all this. So kind of can't we all look back and say no one handled this well? And yeah, I think we all agree with that. I think so like, I think we're all in agreement of that. So next year, you know who should be a presenter again? Chris Rock. You Absolutely. know who should be there? You know who should be a presenter next year? Will Smith. Like, just... Uh, uh, why not? Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, Taylor Swift's childhood home has just hit the market for a million dollars. I saw that. That was like a week ago, I think. Yeah, yes. in where? She put it in for you. Nanako? Where, where is it? I'm not sure exactly. Um, Reading. Says the five bedroom, four bathroom property in Reading, Pennsylvania. It is rumored that Taylor Swift wrote Love Story and Teardrops on My Guitar in the House. You want to sing those to us? I can't believe you have not been on this house yet. You are the biggest Taylor Swift fan I've ever met. Okay, first of all, I'm not the biggest Taylor Swift fan. She's incredibly talented. And how much are they asking for? Um, a million. And now ask again why I haven't bid on it. <laughs> Why haven't you bid on it? Because they want a million dollars. Um, that's fair. You know who um, doesn't it, have a million dollars? Who's that? Me. Uh, 
Uh, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm trying to avoid the the sad stuff. I'm trying to avoid because it it's like, and it is fascinating. Ahead. In America, we talked the other day about snack foods and how Pennsylvania kind of dominates, and the fact that Taylor Swift, Christina Aguilera, and Pink are all from Pennsylvania is kind of neat, and it's just you know dumb luck, but it's it's a neat is story. I don't know if it is dumb luck. Do you think it's dumb luck? It has to be. Like we're not. Yeah, why? Like, we're not a musical hotbed. We're, well, here, but this is the funny thing. Like, what do you consider, like, name three places that are, like, musical hotbeds. I have a feeling I know, like, what you're going to say. Like, what are what? musical hotbeds? Nashville. Uh-huh. Uh, New York, L.A., Seattle okay. was for a little here's, while. Yes, but here's, so to me, most people there aren't from there. Like most musicians in Nashville aren't born and raised in Nashville. Like most actors in LA aren't born and raised in LA. Like, no, and I get that. I mean, I get what you're saying. But like, if you take in the past however many years, in 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 our lifetime since whatever, and you take the ten biggest female musicians, and you throw in Madonna, and you throw in someone like Alanis Morissette. And you throw in Britney Spears, like three of the top 10 are Taylor Swift, Pink, and Christina Aguilera. Taylor, so Swift, and Pink, Taylor Swift and Pink are probably two of the top five. So, like, I mean, Madonna so was from Michigan. That I, I guess Motown, when you want to look at Motown, but like, I, I don't know. It's just... It's weird. Yeah, there's, there's. I think it's more dumb luck and happenstance than anything else. I, huh? Interesting. Here's what I will say. Completely naive to this, but this is just my like Gladwellian opinion. Wait, who? Gladwell, like Malcolm Gladwell. Gladwellian. That's very. I like it. Very nice. Thank you. So, like, my Gladwellian opinion of this, because I think Gladwell looks in, like, sometimes he goes so deep into stuff that it's, like, overblown. But my Gladwellian opinion of this, I think there's something to say for Pennsylvania where there is a mixture and a vibe where you get everything. Like, you have the major cities. You have the rural areas. You Like, you, you have the Amish. Like, you have all these different pockets of communities and different things. And music's very similar. Like you, like you have your country lovers and your hip hop in Philadelphia. And like, it's just, it, it's such a unique melting pot of cultures and different types of people. Musically, that's very, it, to me, that's an incline. Like that's an inclination for creativity. It's, it shows. So when I think of Pink and I think of Taylor Swift and I think of these people, like a lot of the stuff they did blended different types of music and it helped them be creative. And I don't know, like I think PA I have no issue in implying that PA is a hotbed for music. None whatsoever. I would, I'm very willing to say that. Okay. See, I'm just oh, like Western oh. PA. There were quarterbacks that came from West. Joe Namath came from Western PA. Johnny Unitas came from Western PA. But, Dan Marino came. but it was, but that's dumb luck too. Because you think what? So? Yes, absolutely. I disagree. Why do you think it's all dumb luck? So because anything what, that comes out of Pennsylvania consistently is just dumb luck. Well, when it's disproportionate to, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's disproportionate. That's weird. Like, I would never think, like, a lot of great basketball players come out of New York City, but I don't think that's dumb luck. Like, I, like, I think there's something No, very because I think New York City is a hotbed for basketball. Okay, so will why would Pennsylvania not be a, a hotbed for quarterbacks or female singers? Like, why because, couldn't Pennsylvania be that? Because why would it be? So what you're saying is then, this is what I'm saying. Ten years from now, there are going to be great basketball players coming out of New York City. Mm -hmm. Ten years from now, is there going to be another generation of female rock star singers? Well, no, but so the point, so the Gladwellian part of this, I guess what, like, I did a poor job of explaining. The Gladwellian part of this is, is he would say, here's a trend. And then he would go back and find what, like, what happened in this pocket of time? 
Like, how could it be possible that within a 10 year span, you have Pink, Aguilera, um, the, is it Paramore? The Paramore came out from outside of Philadelphia, um, Taylor Swift. Like, you have all of these different people that have these hits and these number one songs. And so he would say, okay, what was going on in Pennsylvania between this point in time? And so, all I'm saying is like, Gladwellian, like, I think there's probably something there. Like, there's probably a reason. Same thing with quarterbacks. The two examples that he makes in his book, and you'll find this really fascinating. The two examples he gave is hockey players. There was like this two month span where every professional hockey player was born. And they were like, why is this possible? And when you go through and you look into it, the hockey's a, it's an expensive sport. You need an ice rink and all stars really, really matter. Cause you can't just go play pickup hockey in the street. So you have to make all-stars in order to make all-stars. You got to be bigger and stronger in order to be bigger and stronger. It helps when you're 10 months older than somebody else when you're eight years old. So if you're born in this two month window, you have your chances of being a professional hockey player go up astronomically. The other example that he gave is in Seattle, Washington, um, there was a period of time in the, in the seventies and eighties where the first computers were being made there. And so if you go through and you look at like the richest 100 Americans, like I think it's 25% of them were born within like a 50 mile radius of each other in Washington. And the reason is, is that's where two of the first major computer um, halls, computer labs, whatever you want to call them on college campuses were made. And so it had nothing to do with the fact that like, these people were smarter or these people worked harder or these, the difference was like, you had to be born in this 50 mile radius. And so when I hear you say like, boy, all these pop singers from PA or these quarterbacks from PA, there must be a Gladwellian feature to why that happened. Something must've been going on in that range of time in that pocket of area that allowed this to happen. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, to, 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 to extrapolate, do you think when you think of music hotbeds, do you think of Indiana? No, because no, why would you? But, but you know who came from Indiana? John mm -hmm. Mellencamp, the Jackson mm -hmm. Five, mm -hmm. and um, Axl Rose. They all came from Indiana. Now, huh? does it? I mean, they're all different genres. They're different. Well, they I mean, in, the difference, the difference is they all came at different times, right? I mean, like, did they all come at the same time? I mean, the Jacksons, no, they were all, well, Mellencamp and, and Axel aren't that far apart. And they're not all that. They were all within 20 years. But it's yeah. like, I, I don't know, like Springsteen and Bon Jovi came from New Jersey. And is that, you know, is that, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, I just think there's a lot of dumb luck. That's what I think. Dumb. Um, Le LeBron James is not going to make the playoffs. Do you care? Um, I, no, at this year, I don't. Um, and I, I think it's, again, I, I think it's unfortunate that people beat up LeBron. I saw a thing that said, oh, LeBron has ruined another team. And I was like, <laughs> ruined? Ruined? Like, all, for all his career, all he did was take every team he was on to the NBA Finals. I'm not sure how that ruined anyone. So, um, I mean, this year it obviously didn't work out. And he's not young again. But didn't he lead the league in scoring? I just. That, that was there's putting this, it politely. That it didn't this, work out. There's this issue. It did not work out. There's this issue with LeBron that because he is a, a he is a threat to Jordan and to all the people who who still love Jordan and who say that Jordan is the greatest player ever. And I am one of them. Um, most of these people have a tough time uh, applauding LeBron for maybe being the second best player of all time or being in the argument, at least. And yeah. It's, it's almost like people can't do both. They can't say Jordan's the best, but LeBron was really great too. They have to, they have to poo poo uh, LeBron. And I, I don't understand that. And I think it's unfortunate because he is, I mean, he is up there in the argument. I know you've talked about Wilt. You've talked about Kareem. There's other guys in the argument, no doubt about Oscar Robertson, all that. But yeah. LeBron is it, in the argument. Uh, in my opinion, he's one of the three best players of all time. This year was not a great year like it was not a great look for him I and you can tell me all the numbers he almost led the league in scoring I get all those things first if you're watching him on a day-to-day -day basis it's not great like it's not, well, and I'm not even talking about the skill I'm talking about like the demeanor the 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 tweets like it's not this 
this is going to end. Like at some point, he's not like it's not going to be good. And all I'm saying is this could end like a dumpster fire by by the way the way things were handled this year and by some of the stuff he said. It could end very, very poorly for him from like a PR standpoint. And I hope that doesn't happen because, again, I think he's one of the best three players of all time. How old is he? 37. I think he'll be 38. I was going to say 37. I hope, this, and I'm agreeing with everything you just said. Um, I hope that someone kind of comes and, and sits down with him now and says, listen, you're not the best player in the game anymore. Um. You're 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 a good player who's going to be on a good team, and, and kind of the way Derek Jeter went out with the Yankees, like we we just we want to go out so we can be proud, so we can be. But you're not the best player in the game anymore. You're not single handedly leading teams to championships anymore. Um, so yes, you're the the victory tour, whether it's one year, two years. I know he says he wants to play with his kid in the NBA. Um, just now it's just a different, it's a different approach. It's not win at all costs. It's not, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's much more, you want to do much more publicity and you want to focus on being eminently likable. And so people can applaud you on the way out. Cause you're right. If, it, if you don't want at the end for people to be like, I'm just sick of LeBron and just go away. So it will be, that will be his next challenge from here on out. I agree. Um, Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson going strong. Were they not? I mean, no, I mean, they're still like, it's still going. They were seen holding hands um, at their first public event together. So let me ask you this because I thought about this. It is so. This would go back to all publicity is good publicity, even though we found out with Will Smith it's not. This is be, This is great for Pete Davidson's career. But in a when you take away the career aspect and all the, the the shine and all that stuff, when you actually get down to a real relationship, and you if if this is real, which I assume it is, would you would you be comfortable dating someone whose ex is as seems to be as what how would you describe him? Unhinged? Unbalanced? How are you talking about Kanye West? Uh-huh. Oh, he is he is medically like he needs some help medically. Like that is very fair to say. I have very so, little hesitation saying that. If you're Pete Davidson, doesn't this scare the daylights out of you? I don't know. I, this is this is why I say it. I think in normal settings, what you're implying is very true. But in celebrity settings, I don't know if it's the same. You think they have enough security and enough, like I don't, not even security, but I think there's, I think in celebrity culture, there's so much posing and there's so much just, like I'm sure there are very similar situations to the Davidson Kardashian Kanye situation right now, that every day someone says something they shouldn't say, somebody is mentally not all there, somebody is struggling with it, someone is making threats. But we don't ever hear about it, and it never makes the news because nothing ever comes of it. In celebrity status, all of that is just exposed. And mm -hmm. so, like, I just don't know in their world if this is as big as it feels because this is the average world to them. Yeah, but you know, you have to also believe that there are relationships all over the place, millions of them that we never hear of, where a guy and a girl or two or whoever – that two people really want to date and really want to be an item, but one of them is unwilling to because the other person's ex is such a pain in the ass that they're just like, I, I just can't deal with this. It's just not worth the hassle. So um, if, you're, if you're Pete Davidson, though, this might be worth the hat. Like this might. Oh, I, yeah, I think. Like this might be, I, obviously, like he's dated some very attractive people. But this, I mean, I mean, this is like otherworldly. Like you just may never, I mean, Kim Kardashian, I'm trying to think of the way to word this. Like Kanye West said she's one of the most top 10 attractive women of all time. 
Like, if you made a list from beginning, like, well, Cleopatra. To him. What's he supposed to say? Oh, stop it. You, you know what he's saying, though. Like, I think for a lot of people, if, the, if you just made a list of, like, just attractiveness from the beginning of time to now, I don't know how insane that is to say. that. It might not be that insane to say Kim Kardashian is top 10 of all time. Like, Oh, I don't think it's insane at all. No. So, she, so again, Davidson, like LeBron, she is in the argument. She is so certainly if you're in the argument. Davidson, what's a pesky X when, you're, when you get the chance – Top ten all time. Like what? Like what difference does it make? There's I don't know. There's a difference between pesky and dangerous. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and the question uh, is, how dangerous do you think Kanye is? I don't know. It's so hard to tell. And again, like I'm biased because I'm a Kanye fan, but I'm very willing to admit that like he has his flaws, and and there's no hiding that. I just I don't know. I I don't. I mean, how would you act if Kim Kardashian broke up with you? I don't know. <laughs> you know? It, it is tough to say. <laughs> it is, it, right. I don't know. To, for me to act like I know what Kanye West is emotionally going through, like I I could speculate, but I, I don't know. And the thing you know, about because they have friends. kids, because they have so many kids together, like yeah, he ain't ever going away. Oh, ever. No, that uh, you're right on that one for sure. All right, that's so, all I got for you. Any any closing thoughts? Uh, go Tiger. He is not. Oh, I will say yes. I do have closing thoughts. It's a struggle today in Augusta. Um, that Kim guy who was lighting it up yesterday. He is or not Kim M. He is uh, a one over par today. Dustin Johnson is one over par today. Um, Kepka was struggling earlier. So, um, one of the things uh, golf wise is. The course is never the same in the morning as it is in the afternoon because of weather conditions. It either dries out, it it saw so, you know, it either hardens, it softens, or whatever. Um, sometimes wind dies down. It's, wind doesn't really stay consistent throughout the day. It either gets heavier or less or whatever, harder. I guess is the word I'm looking for. Um, it seems that the course is not playing very easy right now because no one's lighting it up. So hopefully the course gets easier as the day goes on and Tiger gets to fortunately walk into good conditions. But um, yeah, no one's going low today. Everyone's struggling. If I could sleep with my eyes open. If I could sleep <laughs> with my eyes open. That would have been the moment right there. You, oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. You. Suck. By Sunday, I'll be riveted. By Sunday, I'll be all in. Oh, and I will say Saturday night is uh, UFC night. Um, okay. So, and uh, so that's always fun. Nice weekend trend was fun. We'll we'll try to do that every Friday where we just bounce around on. All and that's hey. Ones. Before we go, do you want a Yankee update? Yeah, go ahead. Give it to me. Are they still rich and not winning? <laughs> Did you know the score when you said that? <laughs> no. <laughs> They're losing three nothing in the first. Perfect. I can see so every dime. Question, I can see every dime in that score. So your question of are they rich and not winning? The answer is yes and yes right now. But they haven't got to bat yet. So let's give us a break. That's fair. I mean, who That's doesn't fair. give up three runs in the top of the first? It happens all Look, the time. I'm I'm riding out this Braves thing for the rest of the year until the playoffs start. I am yeah. I'm going to make fun of the Yankees every chance I get. You got a long way to ride it. It's one of the things about being defending champion. You got you got six months, eight months, depending on the sport. You got a long ride. Yeah, um, Chris brought this up. Let's hit this next week. Um, how about the "Don't Say Gay" bill in California? Do you want to? Let's try to talk about that next week sometime. I thought it was Florida. It, it's Florida. It, I, there's there's more though, aren't there? I think Has there's like red. I think there's four states now that have some tor- uh, some sort of bill shaped formed around the florida one we should look it is a fascinating topic it really okay. is let's try yeah, to dive into good. next week we can we can we do, do that more. also and not i know no one's still listening now because they went to watch you know the yankee game um we 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 might have a a, a crazy like positive update of our um our interview that we did with joe lashinsky mm-hmm. who uh the the I say politician. He was city councilman down from Shamok, and we just interviewed him. It was Wednesday, wasn't it? So it was 48 hours ago. Right. And um, um, he just texted me last night, and we were going back and forth. And 
there's an there. I think there's an update. We don't want to give it yet because you know I got to talk to him and see what we're allowed to say and what we're not. But um, it is uh, there's more to this story that's coming, and we think it's really like not good for just good for kind of society. And um, it's just it's a a good happy. It's not an ending. It's not. I'm not saying there's a happy ending that they said. Oh, come on back. But but there are, there seems to be good news. So we'll see. Yeah, sweet. At least we think there might be good news. We'll put it that way. Nothing is concrete. All right. So we'll update you on that, too. We'll have that in the works as well. Um, Thank you guys for watching the Midday Show this week. Um, Appreciate Joe for coming on yesterday. Was it yesterday? Two days ago. Wednesday. Wednesday. We had him on Wednesday. Um, I do know I have written down here um, Jason Fink of the Wayne Sport Commerce. Um, I believe is going to be coming on soon. Uh, we're going to have Jason Fitzgerald back on. I want to dive into some stuff with him. Uh, he's our political guru. Um, I want to dive into some more kind of Russia, Ukraine stuff as it's moved along. Um, I believe we're also going to have um, some wings and some admission stuff from two counselors from Pentec. Um, trying to have Ryan Bogachik and Rance Mahaffey on. They did the wing bracket during the pandemic. So they had they went wow. to all the different wing places around. Um, and then they're also admissions counselors for Pentex. So we'll talk about what the what the school's doing um, and some stuff they have going on for students as well. So I will ask them this when they get here, and I will ask you this right now since you're the one here. Does it make yep. me less of a man when I order boneless wings? It's a great question. I say no. But I, I will Are say you a this boneless one, wings guy? The older I get, the more I want bone in. Bone in? Yes. The young, when I was younger, I was boneless through and through. And then as I, through college and now getting older, I prefer to have the bone in. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Not saying I'm right. Just saying that's where I'm at. Okay. Cause I'm a boneless wing guy, but I think it's kind of like, uh, I don't think that's the manly approach. Remember that question. That's a good question for them. It's a good debate. Okay. I will ask. Thank you guys for watching the Midday Show. Um, be sure to go to northcentralbay.com for all of your local news. I am Jeff Everett. He is Mark Messina, and we will see you next week. Go Tiger.